Cheerios, makers of kicks, invite you to beat the band. If you can. General Mills, makers of kicks, K-I-X, kicks, that delicious new ready-to-eat corn cereal that comes in delicious round golden bubbles, brings you another session of that new novel radio game, Beat the Band. Featuring Ted Weems and his music, Perry Como, Marvel Maxwell, Elmo Tanner, Arm Downs, Country Washburn, Red Ingle, and Parker Gibbs, who join with Gary Moore to bring you this opportunity to beat the band. And the band you have to beat. Sure, and it's Ted O'Weems and his band, celebrating St. Patrick's Day with his arrangement of The Wearing of the Green. <laughs> the band you have to beat. Now meet the man who helps you beat the band, Gary Moore. Well, Ford, I think I'll occupy my time today trying to control those involuntary jam sessions that keep springing up lately, because these questions can fight it out without much help from me. And need I mention that each question used today will earn the writer of that question $10. Besides that, double money, $20, and a case of kicks is guaranteed to those whose questions beat the band. But it may be much more, because we have a $100 bonus to divide among those who beat the band. For example, if three people beat the band, they get 33 and one-third dollars, plus ten dollars for their question, and a case of kicks. However, if only one person beats the band, that person will get the entire $100 bonus, plus ten for the question, and a case of kicks. Now, that's simple, isn't it? And profitable, too, if you can beat the band. So uh, why not try it, by the way, if you haven't already? Send your question to Beat the Band, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Well, now, as we get into our questions, remember to listen for the boom of the old bass drum. It means that someone's question has beat the band. This portion of our program, of course, is unrehearsed, and the men in the band do not know the questions I will ask. All right, fellas, a quick mental switch to your boyhood. Uh, Mrs. C. I. DeWeese of Irwin, Pennsylvania writes, While little Johnny's mother was washing his mouth out with soap, his little sister looked at him accusingly and said, What? My little Johnny's mom. All right, there goes Elmo Tanner's hand up in the air. Elmo, what is it? A sin to tell a lie? Oh, that would have been awful good, Elmo. I'm awful sorry you didn't win. No, the answer is, ooh, what you said. Ooh. That's why she wiped his mouth out. I'm sorry. I'm awful uh, awful sorry, Elmo. You're going to have to throw 50 cents on the drum, if you will. Boom. There it goes. And Mrs. C.E. DeWeese of Irwin, Pennsylvania, receives a full case of kicks and a guarantee of not less than $20, but it may be much more. Remember that bonus. Incidentally, uh, Elmo... Can you, uh, can you sing or whistle, ooh, what you said? If you can, you get five points on the scoreboard. <laughs> All right, good enough. That gives you five points on the... I'm surprised he can whistle. You know, Elmo is now a three days a father. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> three days, got it, George. Uh, uh, incidentally, it's a seven-pound boy. Uh, has you got a job yet, Elmo? <laughs> huh? No job, huh? Shiftless little fellow, isn't he? <laughs> well, all right, ne- never mind. Maybe his pappy can do better. But if you're going to keep throwing 50 cents in the drum, he's going to be broke before he gets to be two years old. But now we come to our second question, today being a great day for the Irish. And if you don't believe it, ask one of them. We offer a question propounded by Paul D. Lytle of Urbana, Illinois. Says, Patrick, tis a great distance this trip I'm taking. 
Now, what song title is suggested by that? It is a great distance, this trip I'm taking, and there goes Elmo Tanner. He wants to try again, all right? It's a long way to Tipperary. Bravo, my boy. <laughs> Thank you. Got it. All right, all right. Tanner gets ten points up on the scoreboard and doesn't have to feed the old bass drum. Now, here we go into our third question. Are there uh, any leathernecks in the crowd? Graham Moore of Seattle, Washington writes, What very popular song is suggested by the motto of the United States Marines, Semper Fidelis? What very popular song? All right, there goes Parker Gibbs, hand up in the air. Well, Semper is faithful forever. That's faithful. absolutely right. Yeah. Semper faithful. Fidelis means always faithful. Always faithful, yeah. Good enough. Can you play it? <laughs> All right. Good enough from Parker Gibbs. He gets his first ten points up on the scoreboard for today. And now, boys, you can take it easy, because here's one for Ted to answer. Ted, if the whole band started playing at once, and they all started on the same tune, what would the title be? Well, if they started to play the one we rehearsed, and they better, it would probably be Make Love with a Guitar. And I wouldn't be surprised if Perry Como sang it. Make love with a guitar If you should meet a sweet senorita Romance with a guitar And when you find her will bind her Make love with a guitar Always the right time Day by the night time No, she'll not withstand this And as I planned it she say I love you Always the right time, daylight or night time. Now she'll not withstand it, and as I planned it, she'll say I love you. As far as I can make out, a lot of you good people seem to be searching these days for a new breakfast food that stays deliciously crisp in milk or cream. Am I right? Well then, ladies and gentlemen, consider your search over for good. The kind of cereal you've been wanting is waiting for you at the grocery store right now. It's called Kicks. That's right. K-I-X Kicks. And it's a swell new ready-to-eat corn cereal popped into tiny round bubbles and toasted a crisp, delicious golden brown. Crisp? Why, these tiny tantalizing bubbles are made to stay crisper than any ordinary flat flake cereal on the market. Even the last delicious spoonful is delightfully crisp and crunchy right down to the last swell golden bubble. Try Kicks, will you? Above everything else, Kicks stays crisp. <laughs> And we barge into our second load of questions with only one person having beat the band so far with Elmo Tanner ahead to collect the money in the big bass drum at the end of the program. Now, on this session, boys, we'll start with a loud rah-rah and then get into this question from Miss Cecily Warner of the Bronx, New York. Here it is. Your father built the stadium for the college, and because the football coach can't risk offending him, you make the first string squad of the college football team. Now, what song title tells you what you have? It's from a from a show, from a musical comedy. 
Your father built the stadium for the college, and because the football coach can't risk offending him, you make the first string squad of the college football team. What song title tells you what you have? Does anybody know the question slipping by? I'm sorry, gentlemen, the answer is varsity drag. That's how you got on the team, you dopes. All right, and all of them rise as one and throw 50 cents in the drum. Good enough? All throw 50 cents in the drum to be collected by the winner at the end of the program. And Miss Cecily Warner of the Bronx, New York, uh, receives $20 in cash, a minimum, plus a whole case of kicks. That's a lot of kicks, 24 big packages, but the new crisp assured kicks package will keep it fresh. All right, now we come into our second question, a broth of a bit of a one, too. Mrs. Sarah E. Nugent of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, who writes that she's visiting her daughter in Cincinnati, Ohio at the moment, writes that a certain gentleman with a red with red hair and blue eyes got lost in the big city. What song tells the story? Certain gentleman with red hair and blue eyes got lost in the big city. What song tells the story? All right, here's Red Angle's hand going up. Could it be anybody here seen Kelly? It not only could be, it is. <laughs> Good for you, Red. You surprised me more than you did yourself, almost. Can you play it? Huh? Oh. Good enough. <laughs> Angle, of all people, being Irish as he can be, should be able to get that. We've got a lot of Irishmen in the band today. Rosie McCarg, Jack O'Brien, uh, Hobart Donovan, Irish as he can be, writes the script. Uh, Bucky Harris, our director is Irish. Gary Moore, that's, I'm half Irish. I guess I count half. Then, of course, that old Irishman sitting in the back row, Pete O'Bealman, on trombones. A great Irish, Irish booster, too. But incidentally, Reg, you get your first ten points up on the scoreboard as we come into our next question. Oh, this 1940. Mrs. Pedro Wange of, and I hope I'm pron- pronouncing that correctly, Wange of Hawley, Minnesota, wants you to tell her what song popular in 1918 is a discouraging warning to young ladies who are looking about, intending to make the most of leap year. What song popular in 19... Oh, there goes Marvel Maxwell's hand up in the air. All right, Marvel. Uh, <clears throat> no, I won't be sure this. A good man is hard to find. Marvel, you're... you uh, So, are you married, Marvel? No. <laughs> yes? <laughs> well, that gives the answer to that. All right, Marvel, can you, can you sing it, huh? Good man's hard to find? A good man... It's hard to find. I always get the uh, other uh, kind. Good enough, Marvel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a good man, it's hard to find with a band trying to get in. Apparently, a good note's hard to find now, nowadays, too. That gives Marvel Maxwell her first ten points up on the scoreboard. And Marvel, incidentally, is wearing that very same lovely spring bonnet she had on last week with the white flowers on it. That's a very good idea, Marvel. I, I know a radio actress who took the flowers off and planted, uh, planted spring beans and spinach. So in case, in case she lost her sponsor, she'd have something to eat on. It's probably a good idea for you. Now let's go on to our next question, fellas. Chew on this one for a while. Alan McKenzie of Runnymede, New Jersey, writes, A dentist is measuring a new patient for a set of false teeth. What song title tells you what the dentist might say to the patient as he prepares some wax? <laughs> Do you fellas rather go home, or shall we keep on with the program here? A dentist is measuring a new patient for a set of false teeth. What song title tells you what the dentist might say to the patient as he prepares some wax? A little logic should give you that one. Ah, uh, rumble of discontent, but that doesn't help a bit. The answer is my first... Uh, I gave it away now. It's too late, Parker. What were, what were you going to say, huh? What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say an image of you. Well, that's Probably. almost... No, it's my first impression of you. Doggone, you were close there, Parker. You were too late anyhow. The whole band has got to put 50 cents in the old bass drum. Getting awful crowded in there, too. As Alan McKenzie of Runnymede, New Jersey, receives a full case of kicks and a guarantee of not less than $20, which may turn out to be much more, remember, that bonus. All right, now here we come. Here's a question with a double curve on it from Elizabeth Payne of Pasadena, California, who says she got her tune answer from the Boy Scout songbook. And her question is this. A young nursemaid was taking her charge for a ride in his perambulator. The lad, a son of a wealthy and prominent family, was inclined toward illness. What old standard song describes the two of them, the nurse and the little boy? I'm trying to give you that startling word picture once again. 
Here is the nurse wheeling a baby carriage containing a young man who is the uh, son of a wealthy and prominent family. What song? It's an old standard. Describes the two of them. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Goodness gracious me. Well, I'm awful sorry. The answer is the lass with the delicate air. Sure, well, the kid's sake, he's a delicate... Never heard of the lass with the delicate air? Well, now, never, never, never mind the whole band feeds the kitty again. Never mind. Boy, this is National Bankruptcy Day. I'm not fooling him. And Elizabeth Payne of Pasadena, California, also receives a full case of kicks and a guarantee of not less than $20. But it may be much more. Remember that bonus? I have the music to the last with the delicate air right here if you want to know how it goes. I bought it. I bought... What? Oh. Oh, well, it goes. I'll, I'll sing the best I can. It goes. Well, it's an Irish tenor. See, it's got to go up high. Man, man, man call her the last with the delicate. It's got a lot of those things in it. Well, anyhow, that gives you a rough idea of how it goes. <laughs> You'd rather have me skipping, huh? All right, let's go into another question. We don't know whether Harry T. Barkley of Rochester, New York, has invaded the Great West or not, but nevertheless, he offers this sticker. He wants you to name the song that suggests an acrobatic plant. An acrobatic plant. Now, Perry Como's hand goes up in the air. All right, Perry. Tumbling tumbleweeds. Perry, you're right, by George. Now, can you sing it, huh? <laughs> now, don't relax now. You haven't won yet. How about tumbling tumbleweeds? A cowboy like you. Uh, without words? Yeah, without words doesn't make any difference. But we'll give you ten points on the scoreboard for that. And, boys, at this point, much palaver has flowed under the bridge work, and it's high time we hide us to a tune. Let's, uh, let's them a new play, huh, Ted? Well, there's nothing we work at better than our playing, Gary. We'll try to prove it with Holiday. Elmo, will you whistle it, please? <laughs> Tanner uh, here just said he bet you know so much about kicks that you could tie up this cereal with just about anything at all. Sure I could. Try me. Well, uh, mm -hmm. looks like rain, doesn't it? Rain, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't affect kicks. 
because of its new crisp assured package containing three separate wax sealed cartons. That's amazing. Now let's see. Um, Blue Monday's almost here again. Ho hum. There's no such thing as Blue Monday if you start the day with a big, delicious bowl of kicks. Oh. Well, you're pretty good here. Let's see. Let's try this last one. I've got a good one here, a good one. Um, Easter. Easter? Easter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday morning, you'll see the brand new styles in clothes and the annual Easter parade. Don't forget that styles have changed in cereals, too. It used to be flakes and shreds, but now it's bubbles. Yes, folks. Tiny, tantalizing, toasted golden corn bubbles are all the rage right now. And, of course, I mean kicks, the delicious new ready-to-eat corn cereal recently developed by General Mills. Styles have changed in Christmas, too. In fact, kicks has given this much-used word quite a new meaning. Each golden individual bubble stays deliciously crisper in milk or cream than any well-known ready-to-eat corn cereal made. And styles have certainly changed in taste as well. A completely different flavor somewhat reminiscent of popcorn, yet again tantalizingly new, has been developed for Kix that is supremely delicious beyond all description. Have you tried Kix yet? If you haven't and want to keep up with the good new things of life, you certainly should do so. If only to find out for yourself what has made Kix over the past two years the fastest growing new breakfast cereal from coast to coast. <laughs> Right ho, here we go into our last group of questions with three people having beat the band so far, and uh, uh, looks like Elmo Tanner is still ahead. For, uh, look, I beg your pardon, four people have beat the band so far, and Elmo Tanner is still ahead for collecting the money on the big bass drum. Fellas, you'll have to do better in this last uh, last bit here. We have here a little missive from Brooklyn, New York, penned by Mrs. C. Sewell. Writes Mrs. Sewell, an actor just getting started in Hollywood and wanting lots of fan mail to prove his value to his studio might do what a popular song of three or four years ago suggests. What is the song? Oh, everybody's hand. Joe Hoover, you haven't answered one so far today. Joe, what, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. That's right, and a very good idea, too. All right, Joe, can you play it on your trumpet? <laughs> Enough, fellas. You can write yourself letters later. And Joe Hooven gets ten points up on the scoreboard for answering that question. And thanks for the jam, guys. As we come into our next question, the intelligentsia may step front and center. Miss Maxine Howell of Des Moines, Iowa, who is apparently a girl of few words, asks, What song might be called the trio from Webster's? The trio from Webster's. All right, there's Country Washburn's hand went up in the air. Country? Uh, three little words. Three little hmm? words? Webster's Dictionary. Absolutely right. All right, Gus. Can you plant on that bull yeah, fiddle yeah. there? That's going to be pretty tough. Huh? Yeah. I would hardly say the bass fiddle was much of an instrument for three little words, but anyhow, we'll give you ten points up on the old scoreboard country as we come into our next question. And here's one for the headline, sent in by Eugene Wellham of Bel Air, New York. The title of what comparatively new tune tells you what the foreign correspondent might have said when the censor finally okayed his story for release. All right, Jack O'Brien over here on the piano had his hand up almost immediately. Uh, now it can be told. Why, Jack, you're amazing. That's absolutely uh, right. Now it can be told. Can you play it on the piano, huh? <laughs> O'Brien, another good Irishman, but gets ten points up on the scoreboard as we come into our last question. We have a contribution from J.K. Mooney of Cumberland, Maryland, who writes, If you started a small riot, the city's finest would probably take you riot. And what would you riot in? All right, Rosie McCarry, everybody's hand for anyone. Black Mariah? Black Mariah, you sound like an experienced man. Can you play it, huh? <laughs> Time's up, Gary, and I've got a few scores to settle around here. Well, Jiggers, fellas, I guess he means it, Ted. Well, we'll go for a ride until he quiets down, Gary. The tune is T for Two, boys, and on your way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
Thirteen questions were used on the program for which General Mills will pay $10 each or $130. Four questions beat the band, so those persons share equally in the $100 bonus plus $10 for the questions, receiving $35 each. That adds up to a grand total of $230 paid for questions. And along with the other winners goes Elmo Tanner, who picks up the cash in the old bass drum today. Thanks a million, you band beaters, and all of you folks who contributed questions. We hope you have fun with that check you're going to receive shortly. And to everyone else, we want you with us as spectators every single Sunday, but we'd like you to get in the game, too. So why not send a question to Beat the Band, Minneapolis, Minnesota. We'll be waiting for it. Remember, folks, there's $10 waiting for you if we use your question. A guarantee of double money, $20, plus a case of kicks if your question is able to beat the band. But it may be much more. Remember that $100 bonus. It's a game, and we want everyone to participate and have fun. Now, of course, we cannot answer each letter personally, but we want you to know that every letter is read and receives careful consideration. There may be many similar questions with identical answers, and, of course, payment will be made only to that person whose question is actually used. So get in the game. It's real fun. This is Fort Pearson speaking for Ted Weems and his band, Gary Moore and General Mills, makers of kicks, inviting you to join us next Sunday. And in the meantime, give yourself a real breakfast treat. Try that delicious new ready-to-eat cereal, Kicks. It's swell. And we'll be looking for you to try to beat the band. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in your search for something really new and different for breakfast, I wonder if you've run across kicks yet. If you haven't, I recommend you most definitely make a point of getting acquainted with this new cereal right away. Because it's really simply swell. It's new in every way. Appetizing new form. Not flakes or shreds, but corn popped into crisp, delicious bubbles and then toasted to a tantalizing golden brown. New crispness, too, in milk or cream. Crispness not approached by any other popular corn cereal. And as for flavor, well, you can't describe the new Kix flavor, but let me tell you, it's a bit like popcorn, and yet again, quite new, and said by many people to be the most supremely delicious cereal ever made. Try it. Kix, in the new crisp assured package, which now contains three separate wax sealed cartons to keep your Kix fresh and crisp and delicious at all times. Heard this afternoon the selection C for Two, which is from the production No No Nana. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Yes, sir. Thank you. Los Angeles went all out for St. Patrick's Day, tending the small green. (laughs) 
No, and all day long on the radio they've been playing Irish songs. One program played, Did Your Mother Come From Ireland? How Are Things in Glockamore? It's a Long Way to Tipperary and My Wild Irish Rose. I know there's nothing unusual about that except this was the Scandinavian hour. <laughs> to a St. Patrick's Day party last night and every important Irish celebrity in Hollywood was there. Maureen O'Hara, Dan O'Herlihy, Pat O'Brien. And when they served the free lunch, another Irishman showed up, Jack O'Benny. <laughs> no, but there's a big Irish colony where I live in North Hollywood, but they stay pretty much to themselves. They come to town only once every four years during a presidential election to vote for Pat O'Brien. <laughs> And, of course, all the Irish cops here in Hollywood have that St. Patrick's Day spirit, but sometimes I think they overdo it. Three times a day I got a ticket for passing a green light. <laughs> but the Irish are a great people. You can say what you like about the Irish, but before you do, make sure you're paid up with a blue cross. <laughs> I went to a St. Patrick's party at Les Brown's house last night. I like to see how the other half lives. <laughs> My suit needed cleaning anyway. <laughs> now, Les invited all the boys in his band. He thought it would be appropriate. Most of them are still green from last New Year's. <laughs> what a party. I won't say things got rough, but about midnight I saw a familiar face across the room and it turned out to be mine. <laughs> about two in the morning, the party got so noisy, even Phil Harris called up and complained about the racket. Phil was lying under the piano. <laughs> and the sax player's girl had the pickle fork in her hand, and I never knew before how sharp those things are. In fact, I wouldn't know now if I hadn't been over to tie my shoelace just as they started to play Pin the Tail on the Donkey. <laughs> Presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Dennis Day, Ann Blythe, and Barry Fitzgerald in Top of the Morning. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and the top of the morning. For quite a few years, we've been looking forward to St. Patrick's Day and the Lux Radio Theater falling on the same day. Because we wanted to bring you one of those charming, whimsical tales that only the Irish can tell. Chock full of will-o'-the-wisp, the little people, and the wearing of the green. And as our stars of tonight's enchanting romance from Paramount Pictures, we have Dennis Day singing the songs of old Aaron to that delightful Colleen and Blythe. And because we should have at least one Irishman who's kissed the Barney Stone, that grand character actor, Barry Fitzgerald. And now, before the curtain goes up, I want you to hear of an important discovery about Lux Toilet Soap. That is wonderful news for your complexion. Yes, tonight I want to make you a promise. A promise that you can improve your complexion, make it feel smoother, firmer, Look fresher, clearer with daily Lux Soap Care. And here is the new discovery that proves this promise. Lux Soap Care has skin tonic action. Remember that phrase, skin tonic action. It means that Lux Care actually stimulates your inner skin. Now, you've probably always thought of your skin from the outside. Tonight, think of your skin from the inside, because the real improvement begins on the inside. Scientific tests show the more you stimulate your inner skin, the lovelier your outer skin looks. And that's just what skin tonic action does for you. It means your complexion will look smoother, firmer, fresher, clearer, even younger. Yes, scientific evidence proves that Lux skin tonic action will make a real difference in the loveliness of any normal healthy skin. And that probably means your skin. You can easily prove this for yourself. Start your daily Lux Care now, and you will see that just one cake of Lux will make your complexion definitely smoother, definitely fresher. You can count on this. We would not make this promise unless we were certain 
that Lux would fulfill every word of it. So try Lux now. Lux toilet soap care and the beautifying benefits of skin tonic action are guaranteed by Lieber Brothers Company. Now, top of the morning. Starring Anne Blythe as Con, Dennis Day as Joe Mulqueen, and Barry Fitzgerald as Bryony McNaughton. <laughs> My name's Joe McQueen. Oh, it's a good Irish name, all right, but the closest I'd ever been to Ireland is a paid-up membership card in the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick and the Fife and Shillelagh Marching Club. The closest, that is, until a couple of weeks ago. You see, I happen to work for the Manhattan Insurance Company, and one day the boss called me in. I just got a cablegram, Joe. Another big theft. They filed a claim for half a million dollars. <whistles> How well do you get along with the Irish? Well, I root for Notre Dame regularly. Why? Because you're taking the next plane for Ireland. Well, why pick on me? What do I know about Ireland? Well, your mother came from there, didn't she? Well, that's no advantage. And the only other man available is Manny Epstein. That's no advantage either. <laughs> now, the theft of the stone was reported a few hours ago in Cork. What kind of stone? The Blarney Stone. <laughs> hey, what are you trying to give me? I know, it's crazy, but we're stuck for 500,000 bucks. But, boss, you can't insure a thing like the Blarney Stone. We did. And the point is, we can't afford that kind of loss. Your tickets and expense money are outside. Now, here, six pages of notes. You can read all about it on the plane. Now, get going. And when I get there? Check with the Cork police, a fellow named Inspector Fowler. Don't let anyone else know who you are. Just be friendly, mix with the people, and find that Blarney Stone. Sheila August Carlange. Meaning what? That's Gaelic. I think it means, here comes the British. Well, ich will das ein später there, Dorton, boss. Well, keep in touch, see? And keep those reports coming in. Well, according to the notes, the theft had been reported to the village police force consisting of two men, Sergeant Brian e. McNaughton and Officer Huey Devine. Oh, it's all too true, Huey. The blind stone has disappeared. And as the legal arm of this village, we belong at the scene of the crime. Now go fetch your bicycle. Hey, look, Bryony, look. Half the village is coming to hear you verify the circumstances. No, 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 no. Get back to your business and let Huey and me attend to our own. Bryony, the stone is gone from the castle. Aye. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. There'll be no more gift to the blind. Oh, a speechless world. Oh, it's a sparkling calamity. Hey, Bryony, look. Your daughter. Morning, Con. Morning, Huey. I brought you lunch early, Father. Take it back, girl. Too much to do today. Oh, then it's really gone, just as the legend said. Oh, I indeed, that someday the Blarney Stone will be stolen. Oh. And there will follow strange accidents and unhappy deeds. Oh. Don't wait up for me, Con. I'm a busy man today. Now, out of me way there, out of me way. Oh, you'll be proud of your father now, Con. Oh, yes, it's a large day for Briny McNaughton. Oh, for 30 years there's been no such time. That's right, Con, that's right. This is the proof of Bryony. Oh, yes. A chance for him to be looked up to for his share of time. And that's a small wish. Oh, find it, Father. Find the stone. Come along, Huey. Over here by the castle steps. No, it's footprints we're looking for. Ah, Footprints. Oh, she, you've got a vast treasure between your ears, Briny. A supreme brain. Aye, aye. Yes. Hey, Briny, there's footprints. Look. Divine. Those are my footprints. Good morning, Sergeant. Inspector Fallon. Well, we got things started, Divine, sir. Divine, rope off this entire area before it's turned into a picnic ground. Yes, sir. Immediate, sir. And what about me, sir? Now, I could either... Go back I... to the village, Briny. But the case, sir, the terrible theft. You operate under the police department of the city of Cork. You've got no jurisdiction here. Now, you'll do us more good if you tend to your own job. You mean that, that I can't help you? I'm sorry, McNaughton, but we'll be moving too fast for an old man to keep up. An old man? Well, maybe not. But who'd bet you'd have the price of another sunrise? Now, please, McNaughton, you'd better go back. Yes, sir. Not the price of another sunrise. And that from a little man who weighs no more than, a, than an echo. Well, I'll stay on the case, and I'll solve it. I'll solve it if it's the last thing I do. Well, the case was still wide open when I reached Cork. 
First, I checked in with Inspector Fallon, then I bought a lot of oil paints and a canvas and headed for the village. En route, I spent an hour or two at Blarney Castle, then I paid a week's rent at the local Waldorf and spread the word around that I was an artist. I wandered over to the first meadow I saw and set up the easel. As expected, it wasn't too long before I had an audience. Would it be right, sir, to say you're a painter of things? Of course he's a painter. The brush is the proof. Oh, hiya, men. Well, I'm glad to see you appreciate the finer things. It is a picture, is it? Well, sure it is. Thought I captured the scene rather well myself. Trees, cows, the river... Oh, well, I guess I'll be going back to the village now. Can we help you? Swell. You grab the easel and the art critic here can carry the paint box. The brushes are full of paint, sir. It's a great mess. Oh, the uh, brushes. Well, where can I wash them? There's a little river, sir, at the end of your nose. Well, let's mosey over, shall we? Say, uh, that robbery created quite a stir around here, hmm? And the evil deeds begin already. Already have six cattle died of no cause at all. Mm. And there's the man who sneezed. Sneezed? Is that bad? Well, sneezing is one thing. But would you not say it odd for a man to sneeze without closing his eyes? Oh, the blinding grief has started for certain. Well, I'm sure sorry, fellas. Meanwhile, let me wash out my brushes. It's a madness of color you've made of this thing, sir. Oh, that. Well, uh, that's the palette. Give it to me. I'll take my knife and scrape the paint off. Well, now, and who do we have over there? Con McNaughton, sir, doing her washing, as any proper girl should. It is said, sir, that the stream of Don Durris is surely the fairest place alive to wash, or to wish. Is that a fact? Sir, would you be cleaning our paints, or would you be staring at Con and her laundry work? Oh, yeah, let's get going here. <whistles> now she's staring at him. And come in this way. I'm Con McNaughton. And who are you? Joe McQueen. Oh, my. What a doll. Ah. Aye. Aye. There's little to match the beauty of Con McNaughton. And now would you have anything else to say? Just uh, amen. Oh. You're American, then? How can you tell? Oh, it was easy, since they're the only ones who know just the tail end of a prayer. <laughs> oh, let's see. America. The land's in. I beg your pardon? And the knife in his hand. Oh, uh, I forgot to clean it. I'll be right with you. Here's his knife. If it's blood you're thinking of, it's only red paint, such as his cow is made of. Oh, I'm pondering on other matters, Pierce O'Neill, the prophecy. The prophecy is related by Biddy O'Devlin. What prophecy, Con? Oh, uh, being a boy, you wouldn't know, but a prophecy that has come to Biddy down through the ages. Oh, help me with my bundle, Pierce. Hurry. Hey, what's the rush? What you talking about? Who's Biddy? And what's this prophecy? You'll have to ask Con McNaughton, sir, if you can catch her. Well, I will. I will. You'd better wait for another time. It's in her mind now. And as any fool knows, the mind of a woman is a dreadful thing to dwell upon. Even in Ireland, huh? <laughs> well, I went back to the village, but I'd no more than hit Main Street when the law closed in. Yep. Bryony McNaughton and Huey Devine hustled me straight to the Who's Gal. Now then, Mr. McQueen, suppose you tell us just what you were doing exactly hanging around Blarney Castle this morning. Oh, uh, that. Well, uh, you see, I was painting. You know, pictures. Go ahead and take a look at him. Hey, hey, he's painted something here, Bryony. Oh, it's a thing of great confusion. Yeah, take a look, Sarge. I rather think I've got something there, don't you? Note the expression on the cow's face. Treated in profile, you see. Tell me, uh, you, you paid money to learn to do this? It was a gift from heaven. Well, I'd leave the church. <laughs> now, I'll give you one more chance. What are you doing in this village? Look, I just told you, Sarge, but if you're going to run your jail this way, I'll just have to take my business someplace else. All right, you mind. Lock him up. Lock me up? Oh, now, look, fellas, on what charge? Vagrancy is enough. And to that, add invading the privacy of the cow. Oh, Bridie, that's a gigantic reply. I didn't think it was so big. Yes, and you can stay in there until you're ready to answer some questions. Like, for instance? Telling us your name's Mulqueen. Now, supposing you tell us your real name. That is my real name, Joe Mulqueen. Uh, they say the true check is in a man's face. 
Well, in this case, it's hard to tell you. We... Because uh, there's practically nothing in his hair. <laughs> Look, first you toss me in the pokey, and now you tell me I'm not Irish. Look, fellas, I gotta draw the line somewhere. Well, I'll interrogate you further when you've had time to think things over. Hey, hey, Briny, Briny, you left your concertina there in the cell. Uh oh, we're about to hear a tune played. Another gift from heaven, I suppose. As beautiful Kitty one morning was dripping with a pitcher of milk from the fair of Colrain. When she saw me, she stumbled, a pitcher it tumbled, and all the sweet buttermilk spilled on the plain. She said to me, you know, ah, what shall I do now? Sure, sure, such a pitcher I'll ne'er meet again. Was the pride of my dairy, oh, Barney McClary, you're sent as a plague on the girls of Coleraine. I sat down beside her and gently did chide her that such a misfortune should give her such pain. A kiss then I gave her and there I did leave her. She'd bow for such pleasure she'd break it again. Twas haymaking season, I can't tell the reason. Misfortunes will never come single, tis plain. Ah, her very soon after, poor Kitty's disaster. The devil a pitcher was left in Ah, sung like a civilized angel, Huey. Ah, so that was a sweet noise, Briny. Go on, Huey, open the door. Huh? Let him out? Yeah. What about the charges, Briny? Oh, I just dismissed them. Briny, isn't he the tender lad? Joe, listen, after hearing you sing, I've decided you've been telling the truth. Now, what are your plans for tonight? Well, I, I was going to bed early, you see. I thought I'd take my brushes and catch the sunrise. We're having a party at our house tonight. Would you care to come? I said, uh, would you care to come? Hey, hey, Briny, the lad's studying the picture on your desk. The picture of Con. Yeah, she's me daughter, Joe. Looks just like me. Your daughter, huh? <laughs> I just cancelled the sunrise. Good. And about tonight, just ask for the house of Briny McNaughton. You can't miss it. You know, Sarge, you've been pretty nice at that. Yep. I may even do your portrait someday. Oh, oh no, oh, no, no, not, not that, no, no. Lots of character there. It's spread all over. Oh, Briny, he likes you. You have a nice face, too. I'm so sweetly disposed, Briny. Not a word or approach for arresting them. I can see that you were tricked by my plan, too. Do you know what I think of John McQueen? I think he's our man. No. Yes. First the blindest stone is stolen. Then out of the morning, a stranger comes with no explanation except that he paints pictures you'd be ashamed to hang in your broom closet. <laughs> now, what do the facts suggest? Ah, Briny. Briny, it was your poise that tricked him. Now, what's our plan? To fool him with friendship till we find some evidence. So tonight, while he's at the party, you'll be at the hotel searching the zoo. Oh, Briny, your intellect's loaded with molecules. Ah, well, no, I, I, I wouldn't say that, Huey. But on certain things, Briny McNaughton doesn't have to be uh, bitten by a fox or oh, no. Meanwhile, I'd gone back to the hotel, plugged in the dictaphone machine, and proceeded to dictate my first report on the case of the missing Blarney Tone. Proceeding at once to the village, where uh, things started getting a little rough. Seems like everybody in town's a little wacky. Anyway, the officer in charge is a cute old codger named McNaughton. Doesn't have much talent, though. I doubt if he could find the curve in a pretzel if you furnished him with a blueprint. But he's a sweet old man. Leaving soon for a party at his home. We'll advise further tomorrow. Signed, Joe Mulqueen. Oh, uh, P.S. If anybody steals one of the pyramids, Manny Epstein's your man. Before we return with Act Two of Top of the Morning, 
Here's your Lux Hollywood reporter, Libby Collin. With a picture of intrigue in Anchor, the true story of World War II's most notorious spy. You'll see the whole expose in 20th Century Fox's gripping documentary, Five Fingers. James Mason, as Cicero, shows how the valet of a British ambassador sold top secrets to the Germans. Lux lovely Danielle Darieux plays Cicero's co-partner in espionage. And Michael Rennie is the British inspector. Libby, speaking of top secrets... What am I bid for Hollywood's top beauty secret? Why, John, everyone knows that glamorous screen stars depend on Lux soap to make skin really lovelier. Yes, when you see lovely Daniel Derrier in Five Fingers, look at her Lux smooth skin. You'll see that Lux soap care with its skin tonic action makes a real difference in the loveliness of skin. And girls, you can be sure that the beauty care that works for Hollywood stars will work for you, too. So try it now. See how soon Lux Skin Tonic Action can improve your skin. Remember, it's proved. The more you stimulate your inner skin with Lux Soap Care, the lovelier your complexion looks. You'll see, you'll feel, it is definitely smoother, firmer, fresher, clearer. Yes, just one cake of Lux Toilet Soap with its Skin Tonic Action can bring this quick new beauty to you. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Top of the Morning, starring Dennis Day as Joe, Anne Blythe as Con, Barry Fitzgerald as Bryony, and Dan O'Hurley as Huey Devine. <laughs> Well, that night I went over to Bryony's house for the party. Frankly, I was hoping to make a little time with his daughter. But when I got there, Con was having a session with an old lady who sat in the corner. Oh, and what happened to David O'Devlin? Oh, it would frighten a star. As the wisest woman in nine counties, I've already heard. Then it has been fulfilled, the first condition of the prophecy. Well, to give you a definite answer, Con, it all depends. On the other hand, there's the second condition. Tell me, Biddy. Tell me again. That he shall come to your house in a coat of Glenamy. And sing like the imprisoned bird of Connemara. Biddy. Well, girl? There he is talking with father. And his courts as green as the map of Ireland. Not only that, he's... Oh, Biddy, look, here they come. This way, Joe, this way. Biddy O'Devlin, this is Joe Mulqueen. I have him for my friend. Good evening. He has a generous face, Branny. And you've already met me, daughter. Oh, we did, father, this afternoon. Then run for the beer con I'm joined. Oh, yes, father, right away. And what of the rubber Branny and the Blanny stone? Oh, there's nothing to report, Biddy. And while we wait, the evil deeds go on. Today I saw a man walking in the sun. And the strange part is he did not cast a shadow. No shadow? <laughs> well, well what, what do you think of that, Joe? I think it's a whale of an act. Ah, the beer, Father. For you and Biddy. And none for McQueen. Well, I've been thinking that perhaps Mr. McQueen would rather dance if there was someone to ask him. You do dance, Mr. Mulqueen. Well, I might get by. You lead. <laughs> then I should like to dance with you. They go together, Bryony, like fleas and a dog. Oh, do they now? Dick can't tell you what happened today. The prediction? Ah, uh, that's a yarn made up for a village girl 500 years ago. How would it count in days like these? Bryony! Bryony! Bryony, it's your telephone. You eat a vine, and his voice is as pale as a bucket of lard. Who is it? You're excusing me, Biddy. It's me official capacity. A moment later, Bryony rushed from the house, jumped on his bicycle, and disappeared. There might have been those who missed him, but not Con and me. By now, we were alone, out in the garden. So I thought I'd tell you about the lilac bushes, Joe, out here in the garden. But, Con, there aren't any lilac bushes. Oh, that's true. For in this part of the country, it is said that the children's breath on the air is perfume enough. Oh, do you have to believe in every fairy tale you hear? I guess it's nice once in a while, but you overdo it around here, don't you think? Oh, it's true. But at least we know they're fairy tales. And it's a better way to think of the fields we'll walk in, the sons we'll want, and the men we'll marry. Hey, how about those men? Ah, oh, not enough prayers to St. Anne, I suppose. St. Anne? Oh, the saint of lovers. All the girls pray to her. It's a short prayer. Please, St. Anne, get me a man. <laughs> Where do I get in line? 
How do you mean, Joe? Oh, honey, you're starting to get some action already. Action? Well, how could you miss? Well, what are you planning on, Joe Mulqueen? Well, back home, they call this making a pitch. Well, could I ask you now, back home, is there such a thing as a slow pitcher? You're in love with someone anyone would know. Takes up all your dreaming. Makes you sort of glow I guess you think your laughter Covers up your side But you've got a love look In your lovely eyes Oh, you're in love with someone Anyone I know like to have his chances a lucky so and so forever and forever he'll be loving you naturally if you're in love with someone like me Singing is a very rich custom. I like it. Yeah, well, I guess it's time for Joe to be rolling. Good night, Con. Good night, Joe. And by the way, if you get a flash from St. Anne, keep me in mind. <laughs> and he sings. Sings like the imprisoned bird of Connemara. I was in kind of a hurry to get back to the hotel. I had a hunch that if I wasn't too late, I'd find company up in my room. Now, now, before you get upset, Mr. Mulqueen, we'll have you know this is an official police visit. Well, hiya, Huey. Bryony? We've been searching your room. Well, if it's the Blarney Stone you're looking for, I'm afraid... You do me the favor to answer me questions. This machine here, what is it? Oh, that's just a dictaphone machine. You talk into it and it plays back. Now, that's a pretty scheme. Would you mind having that play back? Uh, oh, well, maybe some other time, Bryony. That's an order. Play it. Well, we can play a little bit, I guess. You sure you want to hear this? Play it. But it's just... Oh, well. Uh, Manhattan Insurance Company, attention, E.L. Larkin. First report on the theft of the Blarney Stone. Hey, Bryony, it's him. It's his voice. Keep quiet, Devine. Arrived on schedule. Made contact immediately with the Cork police. Hey, the man's a detective. Play on, Judas Mulqueen. <laughs> Proceeding at once to the village where things started getting a little rough. Seems like everybody in town's a little wacky. Well, anyway, the officer in charge is a cute old codger named McNaughton. Doesn't have much talent, though. Oh, Briny, I'm filled with despair. Well, that's about all. Uh, not much else to it. More. More? Oh, but it's just routine, you see. Huey, press the button again. Doesn't have much talent, though. Doubt if he could find a curve and a pretzel if you furnished him with a blueprint. But he's a sweet old man. Sweet old man. Sweet old man. Sweet old... He gets stuck like that sometimes. Anyway, that's really all there is to it, you oh, see. Oh, Bryony, your heart must be as heavy as a bag full of anvils. Oh, I don't blame you for being sore, Bryony, but now that you know we can work together, huh? I'll need your help. No, no, you won't. For if you're not wise, Joe Queen, you'll get some other machine that'll make you so. Come on, Hewitt. Top it all, Father, last night when Joe sang in the garden. Ah, oh, don't you see, Father, Biddy O'Devlin's prediction is right. Biddy O'Devlin. Any properly trained one woman would have been dead years ago. And as for Joe Mulqueen, I detest the man. Oh. And that's the sum of my observations. Now, bring me my breakfast. Yes, Father. Uh, uh, Con. Yes. Did you say how the next condition went? I thought you had no interest in... Oh, I don't, I don't, but, but, but if you were just now to, to uh, blot it out, how would it go? Well, it is said that he will speak in a great voice, the sound of which will come from small places not dreamed of. Well, I don't believe it. Here I am with a great coin to solve and the daughter of me days talking and listening to predictions. 
I'll bid you good morning. I'm going to work. <laughs> You heard what Sergeant McNaughton said. Mr. Mulqueen, you've been requested to leave town on the next bus. Oh, now, wait. I came here to the police station to... Well, after all, cooperating is one thing, but tossing me out of town is quite a switch. What's happened, Bryony? Oh, it just changed my mind. And there's no hurry about leaving, just so long as it's immediate. All right. I hate to leave with that reward and everything, but a fella can't win them all, I guess. Reward, did you say? Yeah. Tell me now, what, what, what reward is that? Oh, the usual thing posted by my company. Five thousand dollars. Joe. Joe, uh, sit, sit, sit down. Would you get sit down? <laughs> yes. Now, and about, uh, about that reward, you'd be the one to get it, I suppose. No, not eligible. I just make the recommendation. Oh, well, then, then maybe Bryony could get it. Oh, sure, if he finds the Blarney Stone. Five thousand dollars. Oh, Bryony, to be rich. That's a comfort even to the dead. Of course, we'd have to work on the case together. Now, what do you say? You're on it. Okay. Now, first of all, who's on your list of suspects? Cormac Gillespie. Oh, yeah? Why? Well, for one thing, Gillespie is seen on the grounds the night of the robbery. Well, that's a fair start. Ah, he's an ugly creation, Joe. If he had to walk around the world, you wouldn't lend him an old shoe. But he's the only one who'd stand to profit from the stone being gone. Oh, how? He's buying up farms. With all the accidents and the cattle dying and such, it's easy to find those who sell for cheap. Cormac Gillespie has spoke to me cousin already, asking to buy his cattle. No, no, I, I'm afraid it, it'll never hold, fellas. Well, anyway, dig up all you can on Gillespie, will you? And nobody's to know you're a detective, right? Oh, no. Artiste. Artiste. Oh, 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 oh Bryony. Five thousand dollars. Oh, I'm delirious for you, Bryony. <laughs> no, no, quiet down, Huey, quiet down. Amongst the wealthy, laughter is kept at a respectable pitch. I spent the rest of the day running a check on Gillespie, but it all added up to zero. Even Bryony had to admit it. Well, maybe you're right, Joe. Maybe Gillespie is innocent. But what would you say to this now? Two days ago, Gillespie called on Huey's cousin, Tamin to buy his land. Huey's cousin turned him down. And this afternoon, while you were gone, Huey's cousin died. Oh, the seizure was very sudden, Joe. His wagon turned over on the road and killed him dead. Killed him, huh? Yeah, well, perhaps no certain people will believe in the accident. If you're wondering, do I think Gillespie killed Tamine? The answer is no. Oh, it was an accident. But Cormac Gillespie counted on the accident's happening. Eh, I was his only relation, Joe. Oh, my heart's destroyed with the grief of it all. I don't see any tears, Huey. Ah, oh, well, now, you see, as Bryony can tell you, I'm, I'm, well, I'm what you might call a, an internal weeper. Oh. Yes. Oh, that's true, Joe. That's true. His, the tears fall on his inside. I, 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 uh, I just saw his will, Bryony. Tommy left me everything. Did he know? Uh, about the accident, I'd, I'd like to see where it happened. Oh, Joe. Joe, do you mind? I'm that overcome with me loss. Well, it could wait until some other time. Hey, could we all have a drink, Bryony? It helps with the sorry, you know. Let's go over to the pub, boys. A nice glass of beer and a word for the woes of the world. Oh, thank you, Bryony. Thank you. There was a telephone in the local saloon. I slipped away from Bryony and the bereaved and put in a call for Inspector Fallon. I had a great idea. And if Fallon okayed it, our chances of finding the Blarney Stone might improve considerably. Fallon okayed it. Meanwhile, what about Bryony's daughter, Con? Well, right about now, Con was seeing Biddy O'Devlin, her pretty head spinning with 500 years of legend. And it happened, Biddy, it happened. The fourth prediction. His voice will come forth from small places not dreamed of. But it's the fifth one that really counts, Con. How did I love him or no one at all? And the important part, if your love is returned, he will tread heavily on your heart. Biddy, to be loved in return, is there no way to guarantee it? Well, I could put a curse on him. Oh, no, no. I, I don't think a curse would be fair. Besides, it does little good to curse an American. They never seem to know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll just have to work. Biddy... Biddy, will you look out your doorway? It's himself walking on the road. Joe McQueen, and I'm the favorite of fate. Oh, could you give me a wise word to go on? Well, now, uh, 
go to him. And should he hit you in the eye with a lump of coal, it's a sign you're making no progress. Oh, thank you, Biddy. Thank you. And may you never have reason, Khan, to hear the last and terrible condition that I'm afraid even to speak of. church, Joe, built 700 years ago, along with this little low wall I'm walking on. It's luck to walk on it, they say. How about sitting down on it? <laughs> oh, I would say that's good luck, too. Now, help me down before I... <gasps> hey, oh. take it easy. Oh, the stone, it moved. Are you all right? Oh, I told you it was luck. Any other stone, I, I'd have broken a leg at least. Well, we're, we're sitting, Joe. You know, I'm going to have to teach you to play post office. Is it a difficult game to learn? Not for a natural-born athlete. Say, uh, what about the romance situation around oh, here? Oh, it's been said of our village that here the greatest pleasures are the reading of books and the kissing of girls. Keeps a girl pretty busy, huh? Oh, yes. Unless, of course, she's married to a great reader. How about you? Oh, I've been kissed, Joe. Sixty-seven times, of course. Thirty of the sixty-seven were at fairs and parties and... Well, that hardly counts. Oh, it's still a fine showing. Fine. Oh, but there's Maggie O'Shea who lives down from us who's been kissed 81 times. Local record, huh? Oh, by far. Would you like to establish a new one? Oh, yes. I mean, that is... You're in love with someone Anyone would know Takes up all your dreaming Makes you sort of glow I guess you think your laughter Covers up your side But you've got a love look In your lovely eyes Oh, tis sweet to think That wherever we sure to find something blissful and dear, and that when we're far from the lips we love, we have but to make love to the lips we are near. The heart, like an ivy, accustomed to cling.
By the time I took Con home, Maggie O'Shea was running a poor second. Con invited me to stay for supper. Oh, I hope you're not starving, Joe. We'll wait till Father gets home. He's kind of late, isn't he? Oh, it must be the case. Oh, it's his great opportunity, Joe. I mean, Father was never first or best at anything. Oh, he's coming now, Con. He's coming up the path. Will you tell him of us? If I can squeeze a word in. <laughs> Joe's here, Father. We're waiting supper. It would sit on me stomach like a keg of nails. Well, aren't you coming in? We've got something to tell you. Haven't you said enough already, Mr. Mulqueen? Said enough. Mr. Mulqueen, did you or did you not telephone Inspector Fallon about a plan? Well, sure I did, but I... And did you tell him that you'd have to be careful of me? And that I was a, a problem? Oh, now, wait a minute. That isn't what I meant at all. Well, I've been removed and made assistant. Huey Devine is the new sergeant. Devine? Oh, but what has Joe to do with this? I don't understand. He's a detective, Con. Sent oh. over to find the Blarney Stone. Oh, Con, now, look. The Fallon got jumpy or something. Oh. I can fix it. Will you leave, Joe? Will you... Please, to take yourself out of here. Con, please. I'll leave some supper on the back doorstep. That's another one of our silly customs. Supper for a beggar, Joe. Or one who is poor in spirit. You have your choice. I couldn't figure it. Sure, I told Fallon I had a plan, but there was nothing in it about taking Bryony stripes away. Now Fallon had gone back to Cork and wouldn't return until morning. Meanwhile, old Biddy O'Devlin had a visitor. Why should I have listened to him, Biddy? Because Joe Mulqueen's the one you chose. Well, the prediction's done and it's of matter to no one. Except for the last condition, Khan. It's been fulfilled. The last one beyond that. A condition I've had no breath for. You'll have to say it, Biddy. Aye. If you should turn him out of your house, and that you've done... He'll go to the wood of Cali. There a song will be sung in the light of the moon. And your man will die. No. No, that's not true. Oh, what's to be done, Biddy? Being a part of the prediction, neither you nor I can warn him. It would do no good. Oh, there must be some way to keep him from the wood of Cali. If you were to pray, you might do it. I will. I will. Pray until me knees hurt. Do. And then pray sitting down until you get the same result. <laughs> ah, there a song will be sung by the light of the moon. And your man will die. <laughs> Top of the morning will continue in a few seconds. Now, my guest, Paramount's Lux Lovely starlet, Susan Morrow. Susan has just seen a preview of that wonderful new musical comedy, Air and Slick from Punkin' Crick. It's really a very funny picture, with Alan L y Alan Young, Dinah Shore, Robert Merrill, and Adele Jurgens. And Paramount staging the world premiere March 21st in Indianapolis, with Alan Young in person. Dinah Shore and Robert Merrill sing some wonderful new hit songs, and Aaron Slick from Pumpkin Creek. Yes, and Alan Young is hilarious as the country bumpkin who saves Dinah Shore from the city slickers. Those big-time operators are Robert Merrill and Adele Jurgens. Adele really is slick-looking, too. What a Lux lovely complexion Adele has. I'd say you, too, Susan. Oh, I'm a Lux enthusiast, too, John. Especially since coming here. I'm out in the sun so much, my, sun, my skin could be quite dry. That's why Lux Soap Care, with its skin tonic action... Helps you, Susan, and helps so many women with dry skin. You see, Lux Skin Tonic Action stimulates your inner skin. Helps it retain natural moisture. So your skin naturally looks smoother and fresher. I do find my skin much softer with Lux Soap Care. All I do is cream in the rich lather, rinse warm, splash cold. The result? Wonderful. Thank you, Susan Morrow. Girls, try Lux Toilet Soap Care now. You'll see Lux Skin Tonic Action can make your skin smoother, firmer, fresher, clearer. You'll see why nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. 
We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. You're listening to Same Time, Same Station, the best of old-time radio. And I'm your host, Jerry Hendigas. The curtain rises on Act 3 of Top of the Morning, starring Dennis Day as Joe, Anne Blythe as Con, Barry Fitzgerald as Bryony, and Dan O'Hurley as Huey Devine. I kept pretty busy the next day, and by the time Inspector Fallon arrived in the village, I had a couple of interesting items to tell him. You angry about McQueen? That nice little parlay you put over. On account of you, Brian e. McNaughton's been demoted, and I lose my gal. I've told you what we thought of the old man. Now... What have you found out? Well, Inspector, I've been out in the country, that spot in the road where Huey Devine's cousin was killed. Well? You're right, Fallon. It wasn't an accident. That cart was pushed over. On my way, way back, I had a little confab with an old gal named Biddy O'Devlin. We cooked up an idea how we can swing it tonight. Only McNaughton plays or we don't play at all. Okay. Uh, you need any help in the meantime? Got all I need. Biddy O'Devlin's for the light work and a kid named Pierce O'Neill for the heavy duty. Plus McNaughton. A small boy, an old woman, and a man with rheumatism. Can you think of anything worse? No, but I'll work on it. See you tonight, Fallon. Staring into the fire with the law of the land gathered around her. I'm ready to begin now. Just tell us about the brownie stone, Biddy. Where is it? Now, now, Briny, there's no need to, 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 to rush the good woman. It was stolen to cover up a black deed. And the black deed was the killing of the cousin of Huey Devine. I shall, like I always suspected, Cormac Gillespie. With the stone gone... Accidents were sure to follow, and the death of the cousin could seem an accident like any of the rest. Hey, oh, oh, what's that? That's the warning from Pierce. Warning, Joe? Oh, you didn't let the lad sing. He was to let us know if someone was heading here. And who would be heading near you, but call me Gillespie? G -G -G Gillespie? All right, boys, let's get him. Come on now. I was right. I, I was right. Gillespie. Yes, the plan was working out as scheduled. Gillespie stood in the moonlight just long enough to be recognized and darted off into the darkness of the woods. We all followed, all except Bryony. You see, our plan was to have Bryony slip back into the cottage and wait there. Wait until we heard another warning from Pierce. Yui. <laughs> Did I scare you, Pierce? It's a sweet voice you have, boy. That rock. Huey, no. Sweet voice to charm an ear. I'll give a warning. Please, Huey. Please. Let me go. You'll sing no more in the wood of Kali. Come in, Huey. <laughs> you leave me no choice, Biddy. You know, don't you? wasn't Gillespie. You killed him, Huey. You killed your cousin. <laughs> I brought a length of rope for you, Biddy. I'll do it swift. Just I promise. Where I... You are. Briny! Oh, oh, oh Briny, they, they played a terrible trick on me. Did you need your cousin's money that badly? Oh, for dressing up, Briny, and traveling. Oh, should the sceneries a man could behold if he only had the money. Drop it, Huey. Drop the poker. Oh, you're the friend of me days, Briny. Stay away. Please, Briny, please. <laughs> That's better. Joe, Inspector, you can come in now. Good work, McNaughton. You're all right, Mrs. O'Devlin. Oh, it's a night to discuss for a hundred years. But you'll not find the Blarney Stone. I'll not give you that pleasure. We'll find it. Dylan, you and Frank, take him out to the car. Oh, oh. Briny. Briny, I'm terrible alone. I'm terrible alone. Friday! No. Where could he have hidden that stone? If a man is wise, he hides a loaf of bread in a bakery and a monk in a monastery. It's a cinch, Fallon. All you have to do is search every stone quarry in Ireland. But if you... Mulqueen, the boy Pierce, where is he? Why hasn't he returned? I told him to come back just as soon as... Do he... the boy. Oh. You must have found him in the wood. Oh, love you quickly now. Follow me. There's a saying, or there should be, that nothing in the world softer than an Irishman's heart, or harder than his head. 
When we found Pierce, he was sitting up, rubbing his head and wondering what it was all about. I wouldn't believe it. Not a mark. Your head, boy. How's your head? No better, no worse than most, Mrs. O'Devlin. Did I, did I do as you wanted, Joe? Oh, you were great, Pierce. Well, it's late, Joe McQueen. And me mother will want me. Good night, you all. Good night, 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 lad. Good night. Joe. Joe, has anything happened to you? It's calm. No, I'm fine. Oh, but Biddy said that... It was the boy, Pierce O'Neill, did the singing con. Oh, then the last condition, Biddy, it's untrue. The prediction is true to the last word. The song will be sung in the wood of Cali. It will be interrupted by violence. And the song will never be finished by man. He's still singing. Your ears, woman. So, not by man, but finished in the hills by the boy, O'Neill. We took Biddy back to her cottage, then started to walk back through the woods to the village. Hey, what's the matter, Rainy? We're walking too fast for you. Joe, you and Con go ahead. Me and the inspector. I will sit down on the wall here and... Find our breath. The exertions of the evening, you know. Ah, oh, we'll walk slowly, Father. And I don't mind it, Mission. I'm a little winded myself. Con, are you sure your father's all right? After all, he's... Oh, oh, there are times, Joe, when I wonder how you ever got to be a detected investigator. What? But there's an old man back there who only thought we'd rather walk alone. Why, that sly old... <laughs> Father! Father, what's happened to you? I was in the wall. What's... Hey, how come you're sitting on the ground? I, I'm sitting on the ground because I was sitting on the wall when it tumbled me off. Joe, look, the same stone and the, and the same wall, the same one I slipped on yesterday. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's strange. A loose stone in a wall that stood firm for 700 years. Holy smoke, it's the stone, the stone found, the Blarney stone. It's what? Well, look at it. Well, I can't, Brian, he's sitting on it. Oh, you, you'd better get up, Father. Well, if that's the Blarney stone, then I, I, I've just touched it. Helen, Helen, will you look? You've got the description, haven't you? Joe! Joe, that's it! That's it! Now, what do you know about that? Oh, Father, you're a hero. Oh, about the reward, Joe. Sitting on the stone that way, now, wouldn't you nearly have to tell them that I found it? Who else? Well, congratulations, McNaughton. And about your old job as sergeant. You are reinstated... No, 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 I think not, Inspector. You see, the reward I spoke of, it wouldn't look well for sergeant to be a wealthy millionaire. (laughs) <laughs> well, take it over, McNaughton. I've got to find a wagon and a block and tackle. You know, Con, seeing you and Joe now, I don't mind the prediction so much after all. But I don't need a prediction to marry. For I've kissed him, Father. And Joe's the one. I didn't even know it was an audition. Well, now, just remember that you're going to marry an heiress. I've read about it in books, but it's grand to see. When you're strolling down the quarry. That means the lane A friendly brook will sing you This sweet refrain Kaid me la falcha And slancha to you And the top of the morning too When it's early in the A-Rock That means the spring Is that a fact? The birds are glad to see you Here's what they sing Kaid me la falcha And slancha too And the top of the morning too Oh, it's great how they greet you in Ireland. Learn the words so you won't have to guess. It's a toast to your health for one thing. And a hundred thousand welcomes, no less. In your heart you're feeling shame, more that means okay. And if you meet a Colleen, here's what you say. Kate me la falcha and slanch it to you. And the top of the morning too. In a minute, our stars will return. Safe Lux Flakes. Lux gives your stockings gentle care. Gives your stockings double wear. Safe Lux Flakes. Nylons wash the Lux Flakes way last twice as long, the experts say. Everywhere a lady goes, it's hard on stockings, hard on hose. Starting, stopping, driving, shopping. Stretch, strain, stretch, strain. Everywhere a lady goes, it's hard on stockings, hard on hose. Stretch, strain, stretch, strain. Scientific strain tests show that stockings washed the gentle Lux Flakes way last twice as long. 
and over 90% of the makers of nylons recommend Lux Care. So start the Lux Flakes habit this very night. Remember, Lux Flakes gives you double the stocking wear. It's like getting an extra pair of stockings with every pair you buy. Extra pair, Lux Care. Double wear, Lux Care. Nylons wash the Lux Flakes way last twice as long, the experts say. Safe Lux Flakes. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Sure, and here they are for their curtain call. Dennis Day, and Blythe, and Barry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Barry, we haven't seen you here in a long time. Where have you been? Oh, me? Oh, well, that's a ridiculous question. <laughs> <laughs> sure, and your name is Barry. <laughs> Where else would I have been but in Ireland? Ah, oh, Barry, but you're the clever one there. <laughs> now, were you making a picture of visiting friends? Well, I, I both. I went to Ireland to make the John Ford production, The Quiet Man. And what part do you play in the picture, Barry? The Quiet Man? Well, did you ever know me to be quiet? I did. No, <laughs> no, I, I'm a Shahran. <laughs> a Shahran? And now, what is that, please? Well, it's something you could use, my girl. A chakron arranges marriages for young people. Oh. <laughs> well, here we have something different, Barry. It's called leap year. Oh, better than that. We have something called Lux Toilet Soap. Used faithfully every day, it makes a girl's complexion irresistible. Then we know you're single by choice, Anne, because you're one of our loveliest Lux girls. Hey, how about me? Why, <laughs> do you use Lux Soap, Dennis? Sure, and look at me. I got two shows. <laughs> And I understand you'll have a very special guest on your television show next Friday night, Dennis. Yeah, poor fellow. He's only got one show. Oh. He has to take in laundry to make ends meet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the poor fellow. And bless your generous heart, Dennis. Who is he now? A song plugger named Jack Benny. He <laughs> <laughs> dad, that's a terrible calamity. Now, uh, what's song for next week here, Bill? Next week we'll have a story that's particularly appropriate for this season of the year. It's one that you've requested again and again. Come to the stable. And from the original cast of this moving 20th Century Fox drama of modern faith and inspiration will be Loretta Young and you, Marlowe. Oh, it's a beautiful story, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night and Aaron Gobra. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of talk tonight about the wearing of the green, but here's John Kennedy to tell you something of both uh, green and new. Here's proof that new green chlorodent toothpaste gives you a clean, fresh mouth all day long. The January Reader's Digest presents facts revealing why Chlorodent, the amazing new toothpaste with magic chlorophyll, gives you the most effective deodorizing action ever discovered. Reader's Digest reports tests which showed why Chlorodent is 50% more effective in combating mouth odors as compared with a toothpaste without chlorophyll. Yes, by brushing your teeth with Chlorodent regularly, preferably after meals, you can have a clean, fresh mouth, not just for minutes, but all day long. Because Chlorodent contains chlorophyll, nature's greatest purifier. Chlorodent fights tooth decay, common gum troubles, too. Chlorodent gives you complete mouth care in a single product. Buy a tube and see for yourself why Chlorodent, the chlorophyll dentifrice, is winning friends faster than any other toothpaste in America. <laughs> Evo Brothers Company unconditionally guarantee the quality and performance of Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes, Clotted and Toothpaste, as presented on this program, or your money back. Now we invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Loretta Young and Hugh Marlowe in Come to the Stable. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Anne Blythe appeared through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, now releasing Flesh and Fury, co-starring Tony Curtis, Jan Sterling, and Mona Freeman. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Come to the Stable, starring Loretta Young and Hugh Marlowe. This is the CBS Radio Network. Well, that'll just about wrap things up for today. Certainly hope you enjoyed the programs. If you'd like to contact us for more information on how to purchase the programs, give us a request for upcoming programs, or just any kind of comments you'd like whatsoever, you may do so by going to our website at 
otrsite.com or you may email us at jerry at otrsite.com or you may call area code 562-696-4387. We'd certainly love to hear from you. And this is Jerry Hendigas saying thanks a lot for listening. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you right here next week, same time, same station. Bye now. Bye now.